Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. This is Elvira and the Party Monsters. Widely considered one of the coolest games ever. I've never played it. That's right, I mainly play the older ones. Now, a lot of you are thinking, come on, Ron, that is an old one. Yeah, it's an old one, but I usually play the even older ones. Uh, I do like Elvira. Who doesn't? Giddy up, ba boom, ba ba boom, ba ba mow mow. Um, somebody told me the other day, our buddy Dennis told me that it had something to do with uh, that, that her getting her start had something to do with Elvis, and that's why the name's like that. I don't know. I, I would imagine he would know. But anyway, awesome game. As far as I've heard. We'll find out. So our buddy Frank brought us this because uh, he wants us to do some work on it. And it's blowing a fuse, he said. I don't know anything about it. I believe this is a 6803 um, Bally. The, the type of CPU that it uses. Uh, or is that the MPU? MPU. <laughs> the board set. Uh, so we're going to check it out. But let's give it a look over here first. This particular one seems to be in very nice shape. Frank, you got a good one here. So this would have been 87, 88, 89, something like that, I think. Let's see if it says... Nineteen eighty nine. Midway Manufacturing Company. Okay, so he has a uh, one of those mylar protector things on it, but it's the type that just kind of covers everything, which those usually keep everything pretty in pretty good shape. I don't think I think this is the type that just floats. It it's not actually stuck down. And it looks like some areas may have mylar under that. Yeah. Okay, so I know there's the glare. Okay, see that little rail underneath the flipper? See the little lines around it? So you're looking at the overlay that's laid on top of it, right? See the light mending? But if you get up here, that's something different. So it has two overlays on it. It has Mylar and then an overlay on the Mylar. That's, that's fine. Um, it's pretty clean in some areas. I guess stuff like this isn't super clean. But it doesn't have a lot of wear down to the wood or anything. She says, I'm hungry. J-A-M Lights Boogie Bonus. Look, there's stuff that flips over and everything else. Go for barbecue before it's all gone. There's the little guys that pop up and down, I think. The boogie men. For some reason, I thought those were down here. Did they put those down here on the next one? The next one was called Scared Stiff. Elvira and the Party Monsters, and then there was a Scared Stiff, and now there's a third one. Uh, the Monster Slide. Ride the Monster Slide. Pretty cool. You know, it has that kind of almost Mad Magazine type vibe to the art. It almost looks like Python Angelo stuff, but... It looks like it is not. I never knew how to pronounce this guy's name. Greg Freres, I guess. He did it. I think Python had left Bally by this point. I think. Might be wrong. Let's see if he's written on here anywhere. This is a Nord... Nordum... Nordman... <laughs> Nordman Freres... Pinaco, Pinacho, 
Graner, Pew, Patla, Richie, and Peterson production. Oh, Richie. Is it Steve Richie or Mark Richie? One of the two. They're brothers. Okay, yeah, it's a fantastic looking game. Just looks awesome. But it's blowing a fuse, he says. So, uh, let's look in the back box. Now, on the 6803s, they had this weird little thing where the the uh, speaker thing is hinged. So if I turn this one way or another, I think it's always backwards. Well, I don't like that. It's turning real easy. <laughs> Might have a problem. Houston, we may have a problem. Oh, I think this one's different. Okay, yeah. So basically on this one, it looks like you're going to lift out the glass. On some of them, this is hinged and it kind of folds out so you can get the glass out. Um, let me see if I can just lift it out or how I can get into it. Yeah, I was just able to lift it out. So here's the key. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can tell. Look, it's not hooked to nothing. I could tell it wasn't moving anything. It was just moving. Okay. LED displays. Very cool. Bally left display. Bally right display. I may be wrong. Maybe it's not a 6803. But I'm just basing that on the shape of the way the cabinet's made and those displays. Here we go. What can we see in here? I am wrong. It is not a 6803. This is going to be a WPC-89, I think they called it. Or maybe a System 11, maybe. Now I know what you're thinking. Ron, why don't you just look it up? Well, I could, but it's more fun to just, you know, learn something by messing with it. Uh, is this a System 11? Hmm. Yeah, I think maybe. I think it's a System 11. We're just trying to learn, people. We're just checking out what's going on. Don't worry about it. It's all going to be good. Have they... I know System 11 is laid out like this, and it's got the sound stuff up here, and then they used an off-board sound, an off, uh, a separate soundboard. We're going to fix it, whatever it is. It doesn't even matter what it is. Like the, the Rock says, it doesn't matter if it's a System 11. We're going to get it anyway. So here's our batteries. Lithium installed. January 26th, 2016. And if you are new to the pinball world, originally they would have been mounted right here. But the problem is if they leak, they leak all over the board and destroy it. Um, and uh, so one of the things that people have done over the years is you take the batteries out and you put two wires and you run it over here and you put the batteries in a little baggie. So now if it leaks, this bag is going to get real nasty and nothing else will. So... Yeah, I think the 6803 stuff stopped way before this. I don't know much about Bally and Williams when they joined together and all of that. You know, so like it says Bally, but down here it said Midway. And then Williams got in the mix at some point too. So at some point the uh the Williams and Bally pinball machines were the same thing. That must have been when the WPC-89 started. So this is probably just before that. I don't know. We're going to look it up in a minute. I know it's driving some of you crazy. Everything looks cool. He says it's blowing a fuse. Well, we got a couple here. I'll bet these are for the displays. And since they are LED displays, they no longer need the high voltage. He said fuse F2 is blowing. F2, where are you? There's a few F2s. F2A and F2C. Where is F2B? <laughs> I 
We're just looking for things messed up, folks. Yeah, I don't see any blown fuses. We'll check them with a meter, though. Oh, there's more down here. Okay, all right. Maybe this is where he's talking about. Uh, they look fine, too. Hmm. Well, you know what we're going to do, right? We're going to look under here, and then we're going to turn it on and see what kind of shape it's in when it got here, and then we'll see what kind of shape we can get it in. You probably, If you're new to the channel, you probably don't have much confidence that I can fix it, because I don't even know what it is, but I think I can fix it. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Just stay, just stay tuned. I'm going to fix it. Uh-huh. Here's where I messed up. I said Williams WPC 89. There isn't an 89. It's a WPC 95, but the original WPC came out in 90. So I was very confused. I've only worked on a couple of those. So this is a, uh, system 11 B, which, uh, precedes 11c there was more to come after that <laughs> so we're on the internet pinball database so you can see elvira and the party monsters was uh september of 89 uh and then there were several more 11b games and then several more 11c games which is basically the same board with just a few mod modifications to it uh, so there was another 20 games before they came out with the wpc stuff in 1990 I can't believe Whirlwind is 11B. That's nuts. Okay, so that's that. Let's look underneath the play field and just see if anything crazy is going on under there before we turn it on. All right, so this is the inside of it. Now, it has these really cool uh, tilt graphics blades on them. So basically, that originally was just black. So they've made new artwork that goes there. It just dresses up the machine, makes it look really cool. The only problem is they get beat up a little bit when you lift up the play field and stuff. So I'm trying to be as careful as possible, Frank, so I don't mess up your machine. Um, so we're just looking to see if anything bounced out of place during it being delivered. Just to make sure there's nothing crazy going on before we turn it on. Everything looks pretty good. This thing has been uh, extensively worked on. You can see that it has LEDs in it that appear to be color matched. That's a pretty common thing people do these days. Um, the artwork stuff. The lockdown bar is new. It has the LED displays. That's pretty cool. Um, the flipper coils have been replaced at some point. This particular one here, pin coil, I don't think they've been around all that long, so that was probably in the last three or four years, probably. Um, yeah, so I don't see anything obvious that would make a fuse blow, but here's what we're going to do. Just while we're in here, I'm going to take a multimeter, and I'm going to measure the ohms. If you've got a fuse blowing, this is one way you can figure it out. Uh, if a coil shorts internally it will do that it will blow a fuse right so what we're going to do is i'm going to take a multimeter and use the two leads and measure resistance across the coil so this coil is just a big long wire that connects here and then here and that resistance should be over about two ohms if you get one that's under two ohms it's probably going to blow a fuse um, we won't mess with the flippers quite right now so let me check all of those coils real quick just to see if we spot something obvious um, before we even turn it on okay so none of those seemed like they had a problem and so i've checked all these fuses with a meter none of them are bad either so i'm not really sure what he's talking about with the fuses but we'll find out shortly enough i did notice though this you're gonna love this now frank didn't do that i know frank wouldn't do this this is not frank that did this he bought it like this i'm sure Come on, people. Come, come, come on. That, that goes there, people. 
Come, come on now. You're not supposed to. Now, don't do this. Okay, you did it on four wires. Don't do it anywhere else. It... Oh, come, come on now. Keep... Come on, people. You're not supposed to. Oh, look, it came right. People, it came right off. That's not how you're supposed tape don't hold it look it's falling off C come on people you're not supposed to tape it on you're supposed to get a little crimp connector and put it on there and put it in the socket and put it in there where it's supposed to be C come on now you're going to make me you're going to make me repeat that people come every time i get one somebody's been hacking on it i don't understand always with the hacking mm, that unhacked frank's game up Fa frank i'm gonna fix it for you don't worry about it. it ain't that big of a deal so this is where they have done the hackage this is that connector. And so what they did was there are only two yellow and white wires coming in. And they've doubled them up to where now there's two connections for each. And then there's only two yellow wires and they've doubled it up where there's two connections for each. That don't work. You can't do that, people. That that It's still one wire. It, it don't work like that. <laughs> it don't work like that. But that's what they did. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh, Trim those back, put the connectors on them, and put it in the thing like it's supposed to be. And uh, that'll fix that. Now, the other one that's messed up is this J9 here. So, see the one, two, three, four, five, six? Same thing. Two of these go through to the board and then come out on some wire, and it probably tells me over here. Um, and then two of these go in, I guess those colors probably match but um, two of these go in and come out over here too so uh, I need to take the tape off crimp new connectors on and put that back the way it originally was that's not going to fix anything because it's probably working fine like that but it's just a long term thing it's going to cause problems again if we don't get a nice connector on it so I'll clean that up a little bit and then we're about ready to turn it on and see if she'll even do anything so this is how they had repaired it, um, running one wire into two. Like I said, that don't really work. <laughs> that's not going to help you much. You might move the heat from there to there. I guess that's maybe what they were trying to do. But um, so I'm putting them back how they were. And I'm what I'm trying to do is first of all, I'm using trifuricon connectors. So these like grab the little pin on the on the connector from three sides. So it helps there be less resistance so it won't heat up as much, hopefully. And then also I'm spacing them apart, one pin, so that if they do heat up, maybe that'll help, you know. So we'll see how that works, but it won't be any worse than it is now. It should be better. So uh, let me do the last one, and then we'll turn her on. All right. So we've got that plugged in, that plugged in. All the tape is gone. Clean that up. Let's see if she'll start. Smoke test. Nothing. It did not like that. Look, all the lights are coming on and then off. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's a little bit of a, what you call a boot problem. Let's try it one more time. See all the lights, the general illumination are coming on and then going off. Like, uh, if you look um, behind here, you'll see some lights, some white lights, and then they'll immediately go off. It looks like it's booting. Free play, pl press start. Every one of the general illumination lights are out. Hmm. That's not good. He's saying F2 was blowing. If you look. F2 is that top one there.
and that is on the general illumination. So I wonder if that's what he was talking about. Yeah, we got some issues. Now, why would they come on and then go right back off? That's a short, usually. I'm surprised it's not blowing the fuse. Let me check to make sure that's the right size fuse. So it is the correct size fuse, and it's not blown. So here we are in the bottom of the cabinet. 6.6 6 volts. It's unregulated, so it, it would be a little high, especially since there's no load on it since none of the lights are on. Uh, so we've got 6.6 .6 volts there coming off the transformer. And then it goes up to that connector we were just messing with. Okay, so now up here on this connector, 6.65 .6 volts, no problem. And... I think this was going out after the fuse, if I can do it without killing myself. We don't have it going out of that connector. Okay, so I have removed this connector. The game is still turned on. We're going to use our fancy little fluke here. We had a viewer give us this. <laughs> Actually mailed it to us. Can you believe that? What a nice guy, if I can get it where you can see it. <laughs> there you go. Um, so I've got it on AC. So what I'm going to do is, they've got two yellow wires and two yellow and white wires coming up from the bottom. You saw that down on the transformer. And I, by the way, the way I know that is because of the, the schematics. You don't have to just memorize that. You can look it, look it up. So what that's doing is it's sending, in our case, 6.6 .6 volts up. Half of that is coming, you know, you're measuring between the yellow wires and the yellow and white wires. So if I were to, I'm connecting on the actual wires. Now that's not perfect because it doesn't necessarily mean that the voltage is on the board. It just means that it's on the wire. And you can see I've got our 6.66. .6. Now there's a digit, there's a uh, decimal point in there, folks. So. Uh, I think we're still all right. Um, and if I move them around, each one of these connections is giving me the same thing. Isn't that perfect for an Elvira game? Hmm. Okay, so uh, here's how you can check what's going on on the board. So we're going to stay on the yellow wire. And if you look at the schematics, the yellow and the white wires were the ones that are fused. So the, wh what's going on is there is a pad on the back of this, behind this connector. And so up to four yellow wires can connect to the one pad to provide it with one leg of the AC. And up to four yellow and white wires can connect to the other pad to provide it with the other leg of the AC that's being used for the general illumination. Right. So once you once the voltage gets up there, they are then putting it through four different fuses to create four different general illumination lines. And so one will be used, or maybe a couple are used for the play field, and a couple are used for the back box, and blah, 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 blah. Well, if I check, let's say I put this on the yellow wire, and then the yellow and white wire goes through the fuses. So I can then just check at a fuse. There's our six, six, six point. 6.6. 6.66. So these two fuses have the voltage on the board. And you can check actually both sides of the fuse. So the voltage is everywhere it's supposed to be. Right? But if I go over to this side, on F2, I have 1.1 volt. And it's like that on both sides of the fuse. Now if that fuse was blown, you would get the 6.6 .6 on one side and you get the 1.1 on the other side. But the fuse isn't blown. And then this fuse below it, I'm getting even worse. I'm getting 0.2 on the fuse, which is nothing. I see I've got 0.1 if I'm not even touching anything. And if I touch it, I've got 0.2. So what's that mean? It means that the voltage is getting on the board and going to two of the fuses, but it's not going to the other two fuses. So there's something screwed up on the board. You can see that parts of the board the connector have been replaced. See the black side there? And then on this one, this this entire connector has been replaced. So at some point this thing got hot like we were talking about and it burnt that freaking connector up. So uh, 
because of that, it's killed all of our of our GI. Now, if we look at the schematics, this F1 and F3 should be making something work, right? But maybe they're not used because only half of the wires are here. So maybe in this game they only use two of the circuits, namely the purple and the yellow, and they don't use the other two. So I don't know. So it could just be two of the fuses are used and it burn it up, and the other two aren't used, and that's why they're still there and not blown. None of them are blown, but that's why those two still have the voltage on them. I may have said a customer sent us that. It wasn't a customer, it was a viewer sent us that multimeter. Um, so here's the wires. There's the yellow ones going in. Here's the yellow and white ones going in. You can see you've got paired colors here. So on this connector, it says that white and green should connect to JN2 on the connector, but actually it doesn't. However, it does go on to J77. So that connector is probably where the back box plugs in. And then we also have a white and brown, and it would be J78. Neither one of those fuses has a problem. They're both fine. It, we've got a problem with F2 and F4 don't have the voltage on them. The reason I unplugged the connector is because there could be a short um, on the board. So let's say that you've got white and violet and it hooks to something on the board that's shorted like an LED. Um, and by the way, regular bulbs can short too, so it's not an LED problem. But um, it could be that something shorted on the board causing a problem. If you disconnect this connector, you have disconnected the GI from the play field. So uh, if something was shorted, it wouldn't short out the voltage on the board. Since we don't even have the voltage on the board, we've got to pull that board out and look at the back of it and see if there's like some really screwed up solder going on. Um, you know, the, the, the taped connectors was done all right. They were soldered together, and then they had a little tape around them. That will work, right? So the 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 whoever did that probably did the replacement on the back of the board too, and they may have done it just fine. But we're about to find out. Okay, so here is where they plug in. It's actually soldered just fine. I mean, it's not brand new or anything, but this is you know this is how they look after they've been cooked a little bit. So we'll touch that up, but I see what the problem is. If you look, the yellow wires connect up here. The yellow and white wires connect down here. So each one connects to a different fuse. So pin two there, I think it's two. Uh, that's actually eight. Pin eight there connects to this fuse. Pin six connects to this fuse. Pin 1, or 9, connects to this fuse, and pin uh, 7 connects to this fuse. So our power going out is right here and right here. So our problem is, whenever I crimped the wires on and I took off where they were doubled up, I disconnected those being connected together on the back. You know what I mean? So since I've only got one wire coming out of here or coming into here we're only powering up one pad they're not all getting the the one leg of the AC only every other one is because that's how I wired it and then the same here so how do we fix this I'm going to solder these pads together I don't know how it would have originally been done other than they probably had the yellow and the white wires just per chance in a different connector than I did. So I put mine in the second one in and then this one and then this one and this one. So I, that's why these two are wired because I've got a wire actually connected there and there. But these two are connected there and there. Now they had defeated that by doubling up the wires that I was making fun of, right? But it actually was fixing the problem that they probably ran into um, where they need the wire here. But, you know, you could have just put one wire there and one wire there. So if I took mine out of there and there and put them there and there, it would probably work. I don't understand why this is like this because it seems to me like these should be joined together. Because they, from the factory, only have two wires coming up from the bottom. 
so I don't know. Now, so I'm going to join these together as I think it should have been originally. It makes me wonder if maybe this is out of a different game or something that uses all four of them individually. But when they go back, so like the yellow wire goes from here, it goes down to the transformer. Well, when it gets to the transformer, they're joined together. So all we're doing is just connecting, you know, the, so the, the power will be here, and then it's fused. We just, the way they're all individually, since we have only half of the wires possible, two of our fuses aren't hooked up, which means that two of the outputs aren't hooked up. Um, still, there might be something else going on too, though, because since these two are hooked up, they go out this connector, which should have lit something up. So we'll see. But that's the first thing we're going to do. I'm going to touch this solder up a little bit, and I'm going to join them together. That will also help on the heat, too, you know, distribute it a little bit more. All right, so that middle one is the key, nothing connects there. So we've got two big blobs now of the two legs of the um, of the uh, AC supply. Two lines come off and run through these two fuses and then feed these two pins. And then two other lines run off on the top and feed these two fuses. And then these two fuses feed a couple of these pins. Right? Some of these move on without being fused. Um, that's just how the schematic shows it. So here is the schematic of the transformer. If you're not familiar with those, that's just how they do it. So at the transformer, you can see all of the, the two yellow wires that they send up are connected together. And the two yellow and white wires are connected together. So all we are doing is we're extending this way up onto the other end of the uh, interconnect board. So if you notice, they have theirs shown as doing what those other ones did. So I'm wondering if there was a wire they cut off or something. Right? So see how the one yellow wire is going to pad one and pad two? And then the other yellow wire is going to pad 3 and pad 4. And then if you go back, they're both connected together. So we have two wires coming up. And instead of connecting them with wires, we're connecting them right here. And I've connected all four of them together instead of just two of them. And then the same thing down here. And it works fine because you they are fused after that. So I think I beat it to death long enough. Uh... We're, one and three were working, so why are they not doing anything? It looks like that's a white and brown wire that goes to the back box. And then F3 should have been a white and green wire that goes to the back box, and then both of those also go to the play field, it says. So, I don't know. But on the play field, it also says that the only ones that matter are the purple and the yellow. Now... We are also going to run into the problem that there are relays that can turn all of this on and off. <laughs> so we might have a problem with that too. But I've just got to make sure that we've got the voltage getting off the board. So that's what this is all about so far. So let's put it back in and see if we get anything. All right, so I put it all back in. Again, I haven't found any fuse blown or anything. I did see this over here. This is interesting. There are two connectors. I know all this is a little tough to see. There are two three-pin connectors that could be reversed. You could plug this in up here, and you could plug this one in down here. And if you did that, it would reverse the pins. These two are actually connected together. The black and yellow is ground. And the gray and yellow is 12 volts. So if you plug this in up here, it's correct. And then if you plug this in here, it's correct. If, if you turned this around and plugged it up here, you would have the 12 volt leading into what wants the ground. You'd have the ground leading in once the, what wants the 12 volt. So I don't know. But everything, I don't see anything wrong with anything. 
So let's see if we get anything this time. Smoke test. Back where we were. I got GI. Let's see if it'll turn them on and off. Yeah, there we go. Okay, but we don't know if that was even a problem. You know? Also, we have coin door bulbs on. So I think everything's cool. All right, so we'll play a quick game, and then uh, there's actually going to be another video on this because we have a bunch of work that we're going to do to the play field. All right, so I've never played it before, and we don't know if it works yet. Let's see. Basically, I'm going to try to figure out what's wrong with it so we can fix it in the next video. Ooh, it's got the spider uh, pinball. <laughs> Boy, she's smooth. It plays smooth. Got those nice System 11 flippers. Yeah, that's... that's slick shots. And I looked it up. It is Mark Ritchie. I don't know what he did on it, but he did part of it. It's got a nice ramp shot. <laughs> and I looked up the Elvis thing. Apparently she dated Elvis a little bit. Knocker works. The drop targets could use a little work. And I can't see the little thing in the middle that you flip things over on, that the little coffins are on. There might be a bulb out up there or something. It's got the cool synth music from the late 80s that were in a lot of these games. Yeah, it's a cool game. Got a nice theme. Got just interesting stuff. It's probably one more game. Smooth. Don't worry, folks. Next, next video, I'll pump up the uh, volume. Frank knows how to turn it back down. I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't mind if we turn up the volume while we do his videos. <laughs> Very cool. I'm gonna guess that the back glass is like a new one. I bet that's either a reproduction or it's like slightly different than the production one. Looks great. All right, so on the next video, we're going to work on the play field a little bit. And um, 
I think we have a ramp we're going to replace or something. I've got a couple boxes of stuff we're going to put on the playfield. So we'll do that on the next video. Don't forget to, to uh, check it out. Now, if you like these horror-themed games, if you think they're cool, I did an entire playlist of a uh, Freddy pinball machine a while back that Gottlieb put out uh, based on Freddy Krueger. Right? So if you want to see the Freddy pinball machine videos, uh, I'll put the link up right here. You're probably looking at it right now. Just click that and click that and you can watch me fix up A Nightmare on Elm Street. But we'll see you back on the next video with uh, part two of this party. Elvira and the party monsters.